Good morning, folks. We've got very cool science news today. We're going to swing past the solar micronova topic on our way out to the cosmos, and we are starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find in the last 24 hours here and in that opening shot, there is building activity just behind the incoming limb on the south. It's another active region appearing ready to push solar cycle 25 deeper into existence. Small CMEs thus far, but we are watching. The solar flaring is creeping upward slowly as well as the active region appears, B-class flare range. Solar wind calmed over the last day, with purple plasma speed on the descent, geomagnetic conditions following suit remaining in all quiet territory. Two quick notes before the science news. This was the Rincon volcano yesterday, nice clearing of its throat here in northern Costa Rica. It strains my belief to think anyone in Mumbai doesn't know what's sitting offshore right now. It's coming today and tomorrow. Major flood risk, and we're off to the science news. Interesting super flare note. We know that red dwarf stars have major super flare events, some millions of times stronger than our sun's solar flares, but now they are discovering the same thing exists on super hot stars too. The mega star spots on those hot space candles are unfathomably larger than those on the sun, and they do help explain some of the extreme radiation seen within dense star clusters. Up next, we've got a potential answer to the lithium abundance problem, stellar nova events. These nova are known to produce tons of different elements and spew them forth in their explosions. The real question is what took so long to consider this theory, or perhaps as Doug Vogt would put it, why wouldn't they want to make such an explanation for the solar system and galactic lithium abundance explained? Wink. Okay, folks, just when you think large-scale cosmology could not be having a worse year with the failure of isotropic expansion, the failure of isotropic electromagnetism, and now, the failure of isotropic galactic spin distribution. They not only suggest that the universe has a quadrupole structure, but that the early universe was spinning, a concept requiring considerable forces not currently modeled through cosmic time. Both of these discoveries, the quadrupole structure today and the shape of the cosmos today, combined with the inferred early spin, make for a field of astronomy begging an explanation. Not to put too fine a point on the answer at the smaller galactic scale, well, let me go ahead and reflect the reality of the situation here. The halo of plasma around the Milky Way is 10 times hotter than previously known. This can only happen one of three ways or a combination of these. Either there are more stars than they thought in the galaxy, which does help answer the galactic rotation problem. The galactic ion wind Parker spiral extends out into the medium, which is a logical extension of the plasma science perspective of the instability. Or there is contributed energy from the feeding filaments connecting to the cosmic web. Not only do all of these explanations point to less need for a dark matter halo around a galaxy, but they believe this is going to be the case around many galaxies. So what was that wink I mentioned during the lithium article? It's nothing, just that our star is an ultra-long period recurrent micronova, and its cycle is due up within years to a couple decades at most. That would be the Cosmic Disaster 44-part episode playlist and full movie linked below the video each day. We greatly appreciate your support. You can also find that movie and playlist on our channel homepage and at suspiciousobservers.org, along with all of our top videos. We got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 4 20 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone